Okay, let's talk about externalities. If you look here at a supply and demand graph and you think about it, we have a situation where supply and demand is set by the market, but the market doesn't always meet the social benefit of what's going on. So for example, something like vaccines. It's annoying for me as a parent to go take my child to get vaccinated. There are minor risks that she could have a bad reaction to a vaccine, anything from paralysis to contracting the disease that she's getting. However, the benefit to society by getting someone vaccinated is extremely high because the more kids are vaccinated, the more likely a disease won't be able to spread and any disease that's not quite working won't get very far through a population. So that has a huge benefit to the population. So let's say that this is the market for vaccines. The first question when you're dealing with an externality is to ask yourself, is this a situation where there's an extra cost to society, a marginal social cost, or an extra benefit to society, a marginal social benefit? And in this case, this has a marginal social benefit. I remember that social cost is supply because my marginal cost curve, remember, is a supply curve for, for most types of firms. So I'm going to move marginal social cost out of the way now and we'll look at marginal social benefit. The demand for vaccines, I don't want my child to get the flu or the measles or the mumps or rubella, is, is there, but the demand for society to have vaccines to keep other children from developing these diseases, particularly children who are too young to get vaccinated or adults who may have had vaccinations that wore off, is much higher. So you have a marginal social benefit. A marginal social benefit is higher. And what we want to do is move the demand from the old curve to the new curve. And the way to do that are, well, are many. But for the most part, if you're dealing with the demand side, you're going to need to deal with consumers. So you could either lower the cost of the good, um, which would bring you to your marginal social benefit point. Because again, we're trying to increase quantity here. So if you lower the cost of the good, you would come to your marginal social benefit point. And you could do that by subsidizing the good itself or giving some sort of kickback to adults who want to, uh, who want to get that vaccine for their children. So lowering the cost of the good would set up a place where you would reach your marginal social benefit point. Um, giving subsidies to vaccine suppliers, which would make the supply increase, and you could come out to your appropriate point, um, or giving other kinds of incentives. And we have raised demand for vaccines by requiring them to go to school. There's a lot of effort and things that have to go into going to school without vaccinations, and that's raised the demand for vaccines because I want to save that money on sending my child to daycare. So for me, it's become valuable. So if it's a marginal social benefit, you move the demand curve. But what if we have a marginal social cost? So this would be things like secondhand smoking um, or the new cereal that's all the rage, pollutionos, ah yes, that would be a marginal social cost. And in this case, you want to reduce the supply of this good. So you want to reduce the number of people inhaling secondhand smoke, which would mean reducing the number of smokers in the first place, um, or in this case, the pollution put off by a factory. So you would have supply and demand here, and the way you would regulate this is by trying to move typically the supply curve. So in order to move the supply curve, you can make it more expensive for people to pollute. That would mean putting regulations in that tax people based on the amount of pollution, um, something like that. And Or you could have a public health campaign that reduced demand for that pollution to get you to the marginal social cost. So you can make some sort of regulation that will move that away from the old supply curve toward the new supply curve. The biggest question you're going to have to ask is, what is the goal? And so the goal of the government would be to, uh, if it's to deal with a social cost, an externality that's a cost to society, you're going to be moving the supply curve to the left. If it's a deal with increasing something that's a marginal benefit to society, you're going to want to move the demand curve to the right um, and reach an equilibrium in that area. Hope this helps.